Okay class, today we're in section 4.3 extension, relate arithmetic sequences to linear functions. 4.3 extension, relate arithmetic sequences to linear functions. Key vocabulary, sequence, arithmetic sequence, and common difference. Your goal, identify, graph, and write the general form of arithmetic sequences. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. The numbers in a sequence are called terms. In an arithmetic sequence, the difference between consecutive terms is constant. The constant difference is called the common difference. Example 1. Identify an arithmetic sequence. Tell whether the sequence is arithmetic. If it is, find the next two terms a negative 4 1 6 11 and 16 b 3 5 9 15 and 23 solution a the first term is a1 is negative 4 find the differences of consecutive terms all right so the difference between the first two numbers is 5 the difference between the next two numbers is 5, the difference between the next two numbers is 5, and the difference between the next two numbers is 5. Because the terms have a common difference, d is equal to 5, or d is 5, the sequence is arithmetic. The next two terms are a sub 6, that's 21, and a sub 7, that's 26. Okay, now let's go back and help out those who may be a little bit confused. All right, the first term is a sub 1. That means that's the first term. See that 1 up under there? That's a 1. All right, now, so to find the common difference then, you take the second term and subtract the first term from it. So that's why they got, see the 2? a 2 is 1. a 1 was that negative 4. So what is 1 minus a negative 4? Don't forget, a negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to end up being 5. Now, next you say a3 minus a2. a3 minus a2. So that means that's going to be 6 minus 1. So what is 6 minus 1? 5. The next term is what? a4 minus a3. So the fourth term is 4. I mean, the fourth term is 11. So 11 minus the third term, 6. So 11 minus 6 is 5. And then the last term, you got a5 minus a4. So what's the fifth term? 16. So now what's 16 minus the fourth term 11? That's going to be 5. So therefore, the common difference is 5 all the way through. Notice when you're writing your terms, you just don't write 1. You have to write a1, a2, a3, a2 a4, a3, a5, and a4. And the common difference you refer to as d. Okay then, so to find the next two terms in the sequence, it's easy. Since you know the common difference is 5, then what is 5 plus 16? 5 plus 16 is 21. To find the next term, and notice that's a6. To find the a7th term, it would be 21 plus 5, which is 26. So, the A6 terms is 21, and the A7 term is 26. Okay, so for B, the first term A1 is 3. So right here is our A1 term. That's going to be our A2, A3, A4, and A5. All right, let's find the common difference of consecutive terms. So A2, 5, minus A1, 3, that's 2. Next we have a3, that's 9, minus a2, which is 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. We do the same thing for a4 and a3. a4 is 15, so 15 minus a3, which is 9, that's 6. All right, now we go over and we look at a5 minus a4. So 23 minus 15, 23 minus 15, that's 8. 
and as you can see there is no common difference so the sequence is is not arithmetic sometimes they pronounce the word arithmetic as arithmetic example 2 graph a sequence graph the sequence negative 4 1 6 11 and 16 make a table pairing each term with its position number once again make a table pairing each term with its position number so position 1 is a negative 4 position 2 or term 2 is 1 term 3 is 6 term 4 is 11 term 5 is 16 so term 1 2 3 4 5 or you can say position position 1 2 3 4 5 then once you do that you have an order pair 1 negative 4 so they graph that over here 2 1 3 6 4 11 and 5 is 16 in other words this is your x the position is your x or the term is your x and y is the actual number in the sequence okay when you go to graph notice on the x-axis they're kind of by ones 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 on the y-axis they're kind of by fives 5 10 15 20 25 therefore when you see them graph 1 negative 4 that's your 1 negative 4 is right above that negative 5 negative 5 is right there right above that follow that all right then the next row you got is x is 2 and y is 1 so x is 2 and y sits just above the line all right Fun functions notice that the points plotted in example 2 appear to lie on a line in fact an arithmetic sequence is a linear function you can think of the common difference d as a slope and 1 comma a1 as a point on the graph of the function an equation in point slope form for the function is a sub n minus a sub 1 is equal to d times n minus 1. The equation can be written as a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So you notice how they took the negative a sub 1 and they moved it to the other side. So plus a sub 1 plus a sub 1. So that's going to cancel out and you end it with the a sub 1 on the other side. Key concept. Rule for an arithmetic sequence. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence with the first term a sub 1 and a common difference d is given by a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d where a sub 1 is the first term d is the common difference and n is whatever term you're trying to find example 3 write a rule for the nth term of a sequence Write a rule for the nth term of the sequence, negative 1, excuse me, negative 4, 1, 6, 11, 16. For the 100th term, solution, the first term of the sequence is a sub 1, the first term is equal to a negative 4. And the common difference that we've already figured out is 5. 1 minus a negative 4 is 5, 6 minus 1 is 5. 11 minus 6 is 5. 16 minus 11 is 5. So, we're going to write the general rule for an arithmetic sequence. So, that's going to be a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Substitute negative 4 for the first term. So, in place of a1, we put negative 4. And 5 for d, the common difference we found, or d, was 5. So, now this is what we have. a sub n is equal to a negative 4 plus n minus 1 times 5. Now we want to find the 100th term. So every place we see an n, we're going to put 100. So that's our original formula once again. And now we're going to substitute 100 for n. So where I have a sub n, I'm going to put down a sub 100. Where I had n, I'm going to put 100. So now I have a sub 100 is equal to a negative 4 plus 100 minus 1 times 5. Alright, so now I'm going to evaluate by doing my basic math. I know that I'm going to say 100 minus 1, that's going to be 99. 
then I say 99 times 5, 99 times 5, and then I subtract 4. And I should come out with 491. Do it yourself and make sure your math works out properly. Once again, 100 minus 1, that's going to be 99. 99 times 5, get that answer, and then multiply that, excuse me, and then subtract that, uh, subtract 4 from that, and you should come out with 491. Okay, now once, a, uh, once again, for those of us who don't see it, a sub 100 is equal to a negative 4 plus 100 minus 1 times 5. 100 minus 1 is 99. 99 times 5 is 495. So um, I end up with a negative 4 plus 495, which is 491. And that concludes uh, today's lesson.